In this vlog, we win a $500 entry tournament for over $40,000, but that's not a spoiler if you're even a little bit interested in poker. The main things that interest me in stories like this are what was it like? How short stacked was I? How many times did I go all in? How many flips did I win? Did I just run really well? How many sets did I flop? How smelly did I think about chopping? Did I think about your mother? We're gonna take you through my first place win. Let's go. We're gonna fast forward to my second entry after your registration is already closed. Objection! Quickly, I'll tell you about the first bullet, actually. It basically boils down to two hands. We lose most of our stack on a failed river bluff on a board of queen, eight, seven, queen, five, with jack nine of diamonds from the small blind. We make a pot sized river bluff versus kings, pocket kings who eventually find the call. And then with our remaining chips, we bluff those off as well, yet again. Jamming on a flop of Jack-9 tours and getting called by Pocket Kings again and, and you know, not getting there. We re-enter. Back to bullet two. We decide to focus and play and not start filming the vlog until we're closer to the bubble. This is because vlogging takes your mental energy away. You're not paying attention to what's going on. And if I don't make a deep run, I don't make a vlog of a tournament anyway. They kind of go hand in hand. So where we resume is uh, off of a 40K starting stack. We hit a gut shot in one hand, we turn two pair in another hand, and then we get value with top pair. So we got, you know, we got three starting stacks, 118K. As I said, this is a multiple day tournament. This is day one, and this of the multiple day ones started with 82 players, and it's gonna play down to only 11. 11 players only make it to day two, which is 12 and a half percent of the field. So if you finish the day, you're in the money, that's the money bubble, and you come back for day two. Okay, 27 players remaining for this first hand of note. Blinds are 1K, 2K, and we have about 50 bigs in our stack. The hijack off of his 40 big blinds are 80K, raises to 5,000. The button calls the 5K, and the small blind also calls, cause fuck it, it's live poker, let's all play shitty. When we are in the big blind and we look down at pocket tens. Now, we cover one guy, the original Razor, and the other two guys cover us. But either way, we have 53 big blinds in our stack at this point. There's only one move. Whether we have 40 effective or 50 effective, it's to go all in. Now, I know it may seem big. Uh, doing an all-in three bet for 40 or 50 big blinds seemed really wild, and I didn't know that was a thing until I started studying tournaments. But there are many situations where you do this, and this is one of them. And I, I couldn't tell you exactly why Ace Jack suited is like a non all in three bet here, but tens is an all in three bet. I just have them roughly memorized at this point in my poker career, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Anyway, the hijack, the original Razor calls. He has 40 big blinds or 80K, and the other two guys fold. Four fifths of our stack is now at risk. I didn't really want to call. We may be screwed here. Best we're flipping, maybe. Sometimes we're ahead. This is one of those times, luckily, he has pocket eights. Oh, good. That's better than the shape I thought I was in. Still need to hold, though. With fucking four-fifths of our stack. Oh, shit, we already won the pot. Nice. So we lose a stupid-ass small pot where we raise pocket jacks, and then there's a three-bet and two people fucking cold call. But we have 169K now at... 1,500, 3K, 3K. There's 23 players left now. Early position raises to 6,500. The button calls the raise, and we're in the big blind and look down at 10-9 offsuit. We call and go three ways to a flop. There's 19,500 in the middle. The flop comes nine high with a club flush draw. So nine, five, four, club, club, spade. We check, the other guy checks, and the button bets 10,000, about half pot. We debate check raising, but ultimately decide we should just call and continue to see what goes down. Early position folds. The turn comes the ace of diamonds. The flush doesn't come in, but it's an ace. We check and now he bets 17K. Again, a little under half pot this time, but we're gonna call again. I don't think he'd bet ace highs on the flop. There's no need multi-way. I don't know what, this is just a bluff or some bullshit. We call the river comes in eight of spades. Check, check, we were correct. We win the pot. Now we have 208,000. So let's fast forward now. There's 18 people left. Again, 11 only make the money. I keep saying that, but it's it's hard to illustrate how actually tense in game this is when it doesn't seem that big after the fact, but the bubbles are tense. And when there's only two tables left on the night and it's 1 a.m. because this flight started at 6 p.m., it's a very, very, a lot of, a lot of tension, right? You're looking at the other table. You're really, you know, trying to whatever. This pot, we are about 150K effective meaning the stacks we're going to be up against 
have about 150k or 35 big blind. Early position raises to 8,000 off of his stack of 150. It folds to us in the small blind and we look down at pocket sevens. We decide to call, there's no, no need to three better while out I don't think. And the big blind calls as well. There's 28k in the pot. I don't know why, but I remember in game using quite a lot of prayer energy on this hand and I didn't, maybe I didn't think I'd run so deep as to win, but I did spend a lot of the prayer equity bank in praying that I'd flop a set on this hand. And it comes 10, 9, 7, rainbow. I can now confirm that God is real, even though I don't know, it's such a minor spot in the scheme of this tournament. Anyway, we check as we would our entire range. The other two players though check as well, unfortunately. So we're not able to check raise or get more money in the pot with our set. The turn comes a pretty bad card for us. It comes Jack of whatever. Now pocket eights have a straight, any eight X, like ace eight suited and shit like that have, have straights. Which and the big blind has like eight, seven, all, all types of bullshit. Early position guy could have king queen. That gets there too, right? So it's really not a good card. We must proceed with caution. However, we need to ensure we get value because ace queen and any jack x now straight draws and over pairs and shit want to pay a little bit. So we bet 10k one third pot into the 28k. To our surprise, the big blind calls. Now the original razor raises to 25k. This is a really small raise. It's a very interesting spot because in game, all of a sudden, it seemed to me now that my set has gone from the best hand to a drawing hand, essentially. I'm assuming one of them has a straight at this point, right? Either an eight or a king queen. But we're not going to fold. We can still fill up. So our hand turns into a draw. So we call and the big blind calls as well, right? Now there's 103k in the pot going to the river. And like I alluded to, I spent way too much prayer equity on this hand. I'm like, please, please pair the board. Please pair the board. Our prayers are answered again. I can reconfirm God is fucking for really real. Comes a jack. I think we have to just check. I don't know if I can lead and make sure the straights call. In hindsight, maybe that's best. Either way, we check. But big blind checks. And the early position raisers, like a fucking wizard, just checks back with king queen. We win a big hand, waste a lot of prayer, but... Um, we win a big pot. Now we have like 276k. Blinds up! We look down at pocket tens again in early position. We raise it up, min raise to 10k. The small blind calls off of like 150k stack. And Michael Martyr jams for 10 big blinds, 50k from the big blind. We make the easy rejam, get the other guy out of the way. And we're about to flip again versus his ace jack suited. We win the flip. We have 340k in our stack now. Chip leading, only 17 players left. We're in great shape, but poker is crazy. Short while later, at 2,500 5k, 5k, we're in the cutoff. It folds to us, and we look down at ace queen offsuit. We raise to 10k, and the button then three bets smallish off of his 50 big bond 250k stack to 25k. Folds back to us, and our only choice is really to call. I could play exploitative as hell, combined with the bubble to say he's not three bet yet and it's the bubble, so fold, but I'm not, I'm not that good yet. And I'm never gonna jam, we'll only get called by better. So I really feel like I can only call and see, see what happens. So we do that. We're heads up, 62K in the middle. We go to a flop of 10, eight, five with two diamonds. We have the ace of diamonds. We check, he bets 25K. And at this point, if we did not have the ace of diamonds, I'd probably fold, but I think we have to call. Um, which we do. So we call. Now there's 112k in the pot. Turn comes six of spades. Bringing the backdoor flush draw of spades. We both check. I check and he checks as well. The river brings the backdoor flush draw and pairs the board. It's the five of spades. Things are tense. This is a three bet pot nearing the bubble. It's getting big. Um, and so what do we do with our hand? In game, I'm thinking to myself, I need to fold out ace king. Since he checked back the turn, which I definitely don't think he would with over pairs, I think this guy mostly has ace king, which I lose to. So I bluff a small size, 35k into 112k. I assume it's enough to get him off ace king in game. But much to my dismay, he hero calls ace king. And I'm like, what the fuck? So we lose a big pot. He actually had ace king of spades. He had the nut backdoor flush draw. Uh, not, not back nuts. He had the nut flush, but was afraid of a straight flush, I guess. I, I don't know. Either way, we lose a big pot and I'm back down to 243k now. These pots are big on the bubble with ICM. We have ace 10 off. We raise to 10k from under the gun. Middle position calls and the button who becomes the main villain in this hand, a way overactive player showing up with all types of garbage, calls off of his stack of 122k. We're three ways to a flop, 37k in the middle. 
comes ace ace five with two hearts one spade i check as i will with my whole range and they both check as well the turn comes with three of diamonds time to get value with our trips we bet 15k middle position guy folds and the button the overactive player calls now there's 67k in the pot going to the river the river becomes the eight of whatever the flush does not come in and now it's time to get value from worse aces or hero calls from pocket pairs like nines, tens, jacks, pairs that will, that are good enough to call that wouldn't three bet. We bet 35K into 67K and then the button jams for 97.5K. It's 62,000 more to win a pot that will be 261K after our call. Can we ever fold? I don't think so. In game, I definitely don't think so because I snap call and he shows ace eight off for a uh, river boat, a horrible pre-flop call and a great river card out of him. We are officially tilted. I don't know at who, why, or what, but just like that, we went from the big stack and 340K to 111K in our stack at the next break. Now there's 16 people left. The blinds are gonna be 3K, 6K when we come back, and we're only gonna have 18 and a half big blinds. I'm feeling honestly pretty demoralized. I feel like I, I fucked up these last two hands, even though in hindsight, I don't think I did. We come back from break though, and we put on a, a semi-short stack fucking clinic. We chase a flush and get there with King Eight of Diamonds. This gets us to 170K and 28 big blinds again. Then there's then we play a bunch of small limb pots and we steal the blinds. We lose some after taking a flop with Ace 10. It doesn't matter. We're still exactly the same after all this, 170K. Now there's 14 people left. All my notes say are 142K after some dumb hands. Now there's 12 left. The stone bubble. We are hand for hand. The biggest pay jump in the in the tournament is from zero to profit. Early position opens, and we have pocket jacks in middle position off of 17 big blinds. We can't be that scared to bubble. We got to put it in. We rejam. He folds, and we're back up to 187k. One hand later, somebody busts, and we are officially on to day two and in the money. So off of a 40k start stack, we bag 4.6 start stacks or 187K, and we come back to 3K, 6K, 6K, 31 big blinds. Now here's where this vlog gets kind of fucked up or different or just stick with me. At the end of day one, the floor, who obviously knew me from the vlog because I'm so famous and amazing, told me I cannot film our vlog at all, even whole cards. So I have to tell you the rest of the story, piecing it together. I have very little footage from day two, unfortunately. You know, this is what we gotta do. So we're back now for day two. The payouts have been posted and we're all in the money. We have only 755 locked up for a profit of negative $245 because we re-entered, and uh, 65 people out of the 500 something have returned. First place is $40,000. Day twos are very exciting, and I wanna know in the comments how many of you guys have actually uh, had the experience of bagging for a live tournament. Comment below if you and how many times have you physically made a day two in a live tournament. It's super fun, you put it in like a bank bag, it's super exciting, man. Also subscribe, please. You could change your mind later, but it helps me motivate to make more videos and grow in force power. Anyway, we're back for day two. It's less tense than the bubble, but it's still tense because we're in the final 12 and a half percent of the field. Let's get to some hands. Early on, we get dealt. King seven of clubs in the low jack. We raise to 12K off our 187K in the big blind 3K, 6K, 6K. It folds around to the small blind who three bets to a very bitch small size, 30K. He's a good player though, and he has a ton of chips, a good kid. We call because of the small size, and we're in position, you know, and based on our assumption, this kid is good because he's good. It makes us more likely to call because it means he's three betting a correct range, right? Against the live old guy or just a live player, I'd be more open to folding possibly. Maybe not in this exact scenario, but I'd be more open to folding because they three bet so infrequently. But but I was giving this kid credit for being good. So anyway, we call, we go heads up to a flop. It comes ace, ace, eight, rainbow with one club. He bets 25K. We call. We can continue with our stronger king highs like king jack, king 10, king queen. But this is just trash because I think even if we hit a seven, we still lose all his pocket tens, nines, eights. Anyway, we, we call like an idiot. Turn is an eight, making the board two pair. He checks and we decide to check back because we're not going to fold out anything that beats us. The river is a two. He checks and I just check back praying that my king high is good. And by some fucking miracle, we get bailed out from our mistake when he shows queen jack suited. 
and we win a nice pot to start the day. We're up to 244K. We're bailed out by the poker gods. After we win that pot by getting bailed out by the poker gods, we lose a pot chasing a flush. Then we uh, win some back, rejamming with ace king, whatever. We're back down to 180K less than we started the day with. The blinds are up 4K, 8K, 8K. And off our 180K, we are under the gun and look down at queen jack of spades. We raise to 16,000. The hijack calls, the small blind calls, and the big blind calls. Four ways to a flop with 72K in the middle, 164K an hour stack behind. The flop comes, 10 of spades, nine of spades, four of your mom. We have an up and down straight flush draw and 20 big blinds. We're in, we're in there. Whatever goes down, we're, we ain't, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not fucking leaving. I'm not fucking leaving. Both blinds check and I check as well, just to simplify, you know, I don't mind taking a free card. I will happily check raise whoever, but uh, we, uh, we check to simplify. The hijack then bets 30K and the small blind calls to our surprise. The big blind folds. Now there's 132K in the pot and we have an easy choice. YOLO it up to the poker gods and go all in for 164K total. The hijack tank folds eventually, but then the small blind to our surprise makes the call. What are we up against? This is our tournament life. He has us covered. Are we just gonna bust early in day two? He shows us a seven of spades for a better flush draw and we feel screwed. Two days of going back and forth from Philadelphia for nothing. Um, I'm not that depressed, but I'm like, Man, and then we feel even worse when a fucking spade comes on the turn right away. Oh, oh, what's this? Oh, it's the king of spades. Oh, we have a straight fucking flush. Let's go. We have a straight flush. We turn a straight flush and we have the nuts and the poker gods are with us. Massive double, hope restored. I'm so pissed I got no footage of the first straight flush I think I've ever gotten on the vlog. And I'm thinking about that in the moment. I'm like, yo, I'm so happy I won that pop, but I'm mad I can't film. I like sat at the table, not that corny. We, whatever, we have 406K in our stack now. This feels like the gods are with us. It's still early, but from 65, there's only 57 people left. All right, fast forward a little bit. We have 390K in our stack with the blinds at 6K, 12K with a 12K big blind ante. So 32 big blinds when we get into a little situation. Early position has raised to 27K off his 265K stack. Middle position who covers both myself and the original razor calls the 27K. Folds to us in the cutoff and we look down at an ace and a queen that don't match suits. We're gonna three bet. I guess we could flat. I haven't looked it up, but I'm gonna three bet. We three bet to 105K. It folds to the original Razor, who then pretty quickly jams for 265K. The, the middle position caller folds, and we are not thrilled, but it's only 22 bigs, and we have to call, obviously, having put in so much already. It's only 150K more to win a pot that's like 550K. You know, how doomed can we be? You know, we, we, we can't be that screwed, but we are pretty screwed when we see that he has pocket queens. 265K out of our 390K stack is at risk. It's a massive flip for us. The run out comes. King, four, ace, garbage, garbage, we win. Lucky us, let's go. 645K in our stack now. 43 people left. Blinds are 8K, 16K, 16K. We now finally have locked up a profit of $30 after two $500 entries. We're guaranteed $1,030. Let's fucking go. We have 687K in our stack. Good for 42 big blinds. At this point, the average is 478 or 30 blinds. We look down at Ace King of Diamonds under the gun. I don't know what I'm doing with my hands. We raise to 32K. Under the gun plus one calls our raise and it folds to the small blind who shoves for around 300K. We obviously call slash rejam makes no difference because we're not folding. And we end up going heads up with 40% of our stack at risk yet again. And as I said, these are the spots you need to pray to the poker gods to run deep. But I didn't pray. I wasted it on the set in day one. As I said, I don't know why I wasted so much of the prayer on that stupid fucking hand. Because we got to win these. 665 in the middle. We're up against pocket sevens. A true flip. The flop comes with a seven in the fucking window. Five, six, seven, five, six. But wait, there's two diamonds, bruh. We're not drawing dead. We have ace king of diamonds. The turn comes, the queen of clubs, and the river comes, the jack of dizzles. The guy slaps the table. We smile, and we now have over 900K in our stack and 56 but hungry big blinds. I don't know what that means. 36 left. Blinds are 10K, 20K, 20K. All right, we're almost down from half the field that we came back to day two with yet. It's not a sweat till the final three or two tables yet, not officially a sweat, 
but it is what become, could become, could become, could become a sweat at this point, right? 36K and we're running good early in the day. Pretty, pretty good. Fold sauce on the button. We have king, queen off. We raise it up to 40K. The big blind defends. He's an overly wild guy. The guy who got us in day one with ace eight off. It's 110K in the middle, going to a flop of eight, five, three, rainbow. He donk leads for 40K. I'm not gonna give up so easy with overs and position and the ability to bluff and outdraw him. So I go ahead and call with 190K in the middle or whatever comes the six of whatever. So eight, five, three, six. He now checks, slows his roll from donk leading. I check back. YouTube algorithm says, use your hands. It all, all YouTube algorithm also says, look at your highest viewed videos and repeat that formula. So that's why I decided to win this fucking tournament. So I can repeat that formula. Anyway, the river comes a jack. He checks to us with 190K in the pot. In game, I'm thinking I need to try to bluff him off a five or a three that he's spazzing out with and being silly on the, on the flop. So I go ahead and bet 125K. Because he's a little overly wild, I wanted to ensure that he folded though. I think this is a good size though, even against normal people with a donk lead. But instead he snap calls and he has jack five for two pair. We lose a pretty big pot here. We're back down to 655K, what we were before the ace king win, 33 big blinds. But I was calm, so calm that my notes even say, quote, all good, baby. The same villain in orbit later, we're on the button. It folds to us and offers 655K or 33 bigs. Blinds at 10, 20, 20. We look down at queen six of diamonds. We're on the button. We raise to 40K. The big blind, this villain, overly wide. Three bets to 140K. We make the ill-advised call and we're in position with queen six of diamonds with 100 something thousand of our stack in the middle going with a pot that has about 250K, we'll say. Heads up and it comes ace, queen, four. Two clubs, one, whatever. Now the three better checks to us, which is weird. Most people three bet and then continue to see bet on almost every board. We check back. The turn comes the 10 of whatever. He now bets 100K, which is about one third, a little bit more of pot, depending. Let's say the pot was to call it 250. So he bet 100K into 250. And we decide we have to call with our middle pair. So now we've invested about 225k of our 655 in this stupid fucking hand probably should just definitely definitely fold the turn here but we're bailed out yet again with the poker gods because the river comes another queen now he checks and into the pot of 450 we decide to bet 175k assuming he's not gonna be able to fold his ace whatever and that's what he does he calls with ace king we have over 1 million in our stack now there's 32 people left at this point and we have 1205 dollars locked up after spending one thousand dollars on two bullets we now have a profit locked up after you take out expenses for pieces gas and opportunity cost of all the time spent we have now locked up a profit of at least negative 107 dollars this is fucking fabulous bro like i said not till the final three or two tables am i actually very nervous because these pay jumps are so minimal at this point the bubble i was very tense and later in this i'll be very tense but at this point i was pretty relaxed with blinds at 10k 20k 20k early position has raised to 50k off of his 33 big blind stack or 675k fold sauce in the hijack and we look down at pocket kings we three bet to 140k folds back to the original razor and he tank calls. So now there's 320K in the middle, going heads up to a flop. He has 535 behind. The flop comes, Jack, seven, five, with two hearts, one diamond. We have the king of hearts. He checks, we gotta get value. We bet 75K. He calls, so I'm thinking he has a lot of Jack X at this point, maybe some flush draws, pocket tens and shit like this. The turn's about to come out, 470K in the middle. He checks dark. I don't know what purpose this really serves when you're gonna check your whole range. It's fucking, it's kind of stupid. But he checks dark and the turn comes the 10 of hearts, bringing in the flush draw. It's not the best card for us because he does have Jack 10 suited. He does have like a set of 10s now. These are hands that he would open and then call a three bet. We're still ahead, but whatever. So once he checks, I decide to check back. We do have equity. We have the king of hearts. We're probably still good now. The river though comes another Jack. He jams 460K into 460K basically. I just think he has Jack X a lot of the time or or boats like with Jack 10 or pocket 10s even or even pocket sevens. He, he also could just see yeah, I have a random Jack. He could have flushes too, like ace queen of hearts. I just don't think people find enough bluffs here in general. I didn't give him any credit for actually. Be, I gave him some credit, but I, I didn't give him credit for bluffing. I also tried to live read him. 
and I didn't see him getting nervous at all. But once we fold, he showed ace queen off with the ace of hearts. So we, we got bluffed off a pretty big pot, 950K in our stack now. At 27 people left, we redraw for seats. And now the reality of making a deep runner could fucking theoretically become a sweat is becoming real. And now there's 25 people left. Blinds are 15K, 30K with a 30K big blind ante. We're in the big blind. We have pocket kings. Middle position jams for four big blinds, 120K. We're already getting excited. Like, all right, at least we're going to win four big blinds. But then the small blind is now deep in the tank. We know we have pocket kings again, because I don't act like I'm at the final table of the fucking main event and, and wait till it's on me to look like a shithead, right? Now this hand, we do put on a bit of a performance, okay? So the small blind has us covered for our 27 bigs. We have pocket kings in the big blind. There's already been a four big blind jam and he is thinking. I am trying to look as disinterested as possible without overselling it, right? But I am trying to give body language as if I'm over it and not not in the hand anymore. And, you know, I, I maybe look again so he knows that I know what I have and I'm like ready to fold. Meanwhile, I'm sitting there praying that he puts in any chips. I'm just hoping he even just calls and I win another four big blinds, right? Eventually, after so long, he finally jams he has us covered by just a little. I can't even call fast enough. I have my headphones on. I'm like, yo, all in? He said all in? He has pocket tens. So he played his hand perfectly fine. He should jam. It's fine. And the other guy has nine eight off. We're set to more than double up with 25 people left. This is massive. So big. And again, we get it in 80, 20, but, but you got to hold these spots. Unfortunately, the flop comes with two tens and we're drawing dead. I'm just kidding. It comes queen, five, ace, three, whatever the fuck. We win. Let's go. We have 1.775 million with 23 people left. And this is a fucking swizz set. A sweat. Could be. We're getting a little excited now. We lose a pot right before going to a break. We win a pot. We lose a pot. We get down as low as 1.3 million. We rejam with ace king over a guy's open back up to 1.6 million. And that's where we are for this next hand with 17 people left. Like I said before, at the end of day one, there's something about when there's only two tables. Left. You can literally see everything that's going on at your table and the table next to you is the entire tournament. And you're this close to 40 K. It's very exciting. We have 2300, 2305 locked up, which is an actual profit. So that's nice, but we're close to the real money and the real jumps at the final table, right? Every mistake is super impactful. The blinds are 20K, 40K with a 40K big blind ante. It folds to us in the cutoff. We have queen eight of clubs and we decide to raise to 80K. The button off of a 15 big blind stack only, he has about 580K in his stack. He decides to just call. I would have thought he'd be playing push or fold. I don't really know how to range this. I have some idea. I don't think he has the nuts ever, really. I think he has hands that want to see flops that are good, maybe middling pocket pairs, things like this, maybe king queen suited, shit that he doesn't really want to jam this late in the tournament, but knows it's too good to fold type of shit. I don't know, because I don't think this is really a strategy. I think you should be jamming or folding when the cutoff opens and you're in the button with 15 bigs. There's 260K in the pot, just with two people in the blinds, just right off the rip. Flop comes, ace, king, 10, with two hearts, one diamond. We don't have any of those suits. We bet 75K into the 260, hoping to fold out his hands. Like I mentioned, I don't think he's gonna fold king, queen type of thing now. Maybe pocket nines, pocket eights, things like this. I, I don't know. So we bet 75K, but unfortunately he calls. Now there's 410K in the pot and he has about 425K behind. The turn not only pairs the board, but also brings in the flush. It's like a super scare card. I don't know how to range people. It's the king of hearts. So it brings in the flush and pairs a middle card. I check ready to give up, but he checks back and the river comes a fourth heart. So there's four hearts out there. The board is paired. I don't think that he would be checking back or or trying to trap with, with a heart. I, I don't know, but in game, I wasn't thinking any of this. In game, I'm thinking, this is like the first actually impulsive thing I did where I didn't really think, I just did it. And after pausing for a bit, I was just like, I think I'm just supposed to jam. I think he's just gonna overfold shit. It might be a massive punt, but we go ahead and, and jam, which is effectively only 400, 25k and thank god he folds so we have 1.8 million 16 people left folding through the blinds 14 left folding 
not really doing much. 13 people left. We take a flop and fold from the big blind. We're down to 1.4 million. Now there's 12 people left. We folded through the blinds a couple more times. And, and each time the blinds pass us, you're, you're paying 125K. So we end up when the blinds go down because we just have folded through the blinds and we're only playing five handed because there's 11 people left at this point now. The blinds go up to 30K, 60K, 60K. We folded down to only 1.1 million. And just like that, from being very comfortable with 25, 23 people left with double the average, we're now below average and we only have 18 big blinds. But we were playing very sound as you should ICM. We just didn't have hands to play with. We just only peeled some flops. And unlike our usual self, we're resisting the urge to open stupid pocket pairs in early position off the stack depth, right? Even though we're five-handed, even opening from the hijack, which is under the gun, you know, it's tempting to want to open like pocket threes like you would when you're deeper or earlier, but it's just fucking stupid, right? Folding ace seven off from the big blind when a tight guy opens. It's just not worth the reverse implied odds with the ICM. So we're making tight folds like this. We're not playing chip EV at this point, especially as people are busting each other at the rate that they are. 1.1 million, 18 big blinds. We then win a nice pot with ace king on a king high flop, and we're back up to 1.3 million. We're now down to 10 people. We are on the final table bubble. Whatever fucking reason, we're not hand for hand. Hand for hand is when there's a big pay jump or a bubble. Tournaments make each table play their hand before they can play the next one so people don't tank. Anyway, I explained to my table that we should be playing slow and let somebody else get eliminated. I literally say it out loud because I feel so annoying being the only one tanking and I'm a pro for America's Cardroom, sign up today, you sign up code gambler and ambassador to game and shit. And I'm sitting there making it not fun by tanking. So I just literally explained to them, I felt so awkward. I say, guys, if we play slower than the other table, just think about it. We're more guaranteed to make, make a pay jump, right? If they play 100 hands and we play zero hands, we'll be down to the final six players, right? So anyway, there's five players at our table, five at theirs. When we get into this this next hand. 1.3 million in our stack or 21 big blinds. We've been playing very tight and feels like we're getting dwindled down, but we're finding spots to fucking fight back a little bit. Actually, that's not true. We've just been letting the cards play, playing ICM like a bitch, as we should, and playing very, very, very slow. We look down at pocket aces under the gun or the hijack because we're only five handed. We raise to 120K. The cutoff calls and the big blind calls. We all have about the same in chips. So I am essentially at risk here. Not literally, but essentially at risk here. One guy covers, one guy I cover, but we're all pretty equal in chips. Be very unhappy, but I'm willing to bust with aces. We're three ways to a flop with 450K in the middle on the bubble of the final table. The flop comes king, jack, four with two hearts and one club. The big blind checks. And we decide we got to bet. We got to protect. We got to get value from King X. We got to get value from flush draws. We bet 175K into the 450K and both players call. I am not really happy with this. I'm like a little bit afraid of King Jack. It, it's very rare that this deep with this much ICM that you play a multi-way pot where two players call a flop bet. I mean, this is really rare on, on the final table bubble. Like if you play online tournament, a hand like this will not happen. Anyway, they both call and we're going to the turn with 800K in the pot. The turn comes and offsuit six. The big blind checks, we check, and the cutoff checks as well. In the river, we are praying for no heart. We have to assume one of them has a flush. The river comes the fucking five of hearts. So the flush comes in. The big blind checks, and it's on me. There's 800K in the pot. We have pocket aces with no heart. We have 1 million in our stack. I, I think there's zero merit in betting. I think we're only going to get called by better at this point this deep. So we check and pray that the cutoff checks back. But unfortunately, he doesn't. He bets 275K. As the big blind tanks, I'm like, all right, I'm going to have to pay this off. He only bet 275K into 800K. Maybe he's bluffing. Maybe he has just like King X that he's trying to get some more value out of. I think I just got a man up and call, even though I really want to make an exploitative fold to his, to what I fear is his flush. I'm just terrified and convinced he has a flush. But then the big blind calls. There's now 1.3 million in the pot. I just have pocket aces with no heart. 
I tank forever. The odds I'm getting now are crazy. I only got to call 275k to win a pot that will be 1.5 million in chips. But every chip you give away at this stage, again, we're on the final table bubble. Every chip I give away at this stage is so big. And is this just a punt? Am I just paying one of these guys with a flush? I think about it and in game, all I can think is like, no, I feel like I have to just call because I feel, I just it, like it, this guy could be bluffing in the cutoff and, and the big blind could be just calling with King high. I'm not afraid of the big blind just who call the river bet of ever having a flush because he would raise the river. So I'm really only afraid of the cutoff having a flush. I don't know how to think through this spot. Eventually, I'm just like, yo, the pot odds are too good, and I have too good of a hand to fold, and I just pay it off, and I just say to the guy, you have a flush? And he says no, and the other guy says no either, and we win. We were up against a, a bluff, ace, queen maybe. This other guy had like king 10 or something. Top pair versus like a Broadway draw bluff. We win a massive pot. We basically double up. And in the course of this hand, to make things even better, somebody busts at the other table. We're now going to the final fucking table. We've just doubled up, basically, increasing our stack from 1.3 to 2.5 million. We now have $4,170 locked up, and we're going to the final table, baby. We take a misreg picture with the rest of the final table people. Now, heading to the final table, the other people's stacks do matter, unlike most of the other tournament, when the average chip stack doesn't really matter the shortest stack and the biggest stack, it doesn't really matter. But when you're at the final table and there's pay jumps and ICM is a thing, very much matters. So here was the situation. We were about second or third in chips. There's one guy who has all the chips, like 7 million of the 20 million in play. But besides him, we cover most of the table by a little bit. And there are two short stacks who have under nine big blinds. The next pay jump is from 4170 to 5550. Like I said, with blinds at 30K, 60K, with a 60K big blind Annie, we have 41 bigs or 2.5 million in our stack, and we are under the gun. We look down at King Jack of Clubs. It's too strong to fold. We can't be this tight and let other people bust. Anyway, we raise to 120K. It folds all the way to the big blind, who has 31 big blinds or 1.7 million in his stack. He calls. We're heads up to a flop with 330K in the middle. And the flop comes. Queen, eight, six, with two hearts and one club. He checks. We bet about a third pot, 125K. He calls. The pot is now 580K in the middle going to the turn. After he calls the flop C bet, I'm ready to give up and shut it down because I don't want to bluff off unless unless I like turn a top pair or something. I want a pot control. I don't want to play massive pots. I don't want to spaz out. I want to let everyone else bust themselves my strategy at the final table. The turn comes good for us. It's not a club, but it's a 10. So now we have an up and down straight draw. He checks and I check back, just hoping to hit and realize equity. The river comes, the nine of hearts. So the front door flush does come in, but we river a straight, right? He checks. There's 580K in the pot. How much will he call if he has a queen? I just got to get value from a bunch of shit. I bet 275K into 580. He folds. Either way, we scoop a nice pot and have 2.8 million in our stack now. So we're still nine people left. Uh, the blinds go up to 40K, 80K, 80K. Early position raises. We look down at pocket kings. We three bet and end up profiting 380K because of their raise of 180 plus the blinds, whatever. We're over 3 million now in chips. A few hands later, we are in the low jack and we cover... Everyone but one person behind us. We have queen nine of diamonds and it's a little wide. Normally chippy V it's fine. And since we cover most of the people, I think this is fine to open. We raise to 160K. We min raise. Folds to the big blind. A guy who's been donk leading a lot and betting with hands he shouldn't and showing up with like weird value. Maybe their bluffs, maybe their value hand. I don't know. Anyway, he's the big blind. He calls. We go heads up to a flop. There's 520K in the middle. All of these pots are so tense. They're short stat. It'd be so dumb for someone to bust on a stupid thing when there's some guys under nine bigs. The pay jumps are real. It, the tension is very high. We're at the final fucking table here, guys. We're heads up to a flop. Queen, jack, nine, rainbow with one diamond. We have queen, nine of diamonds. He checks. I think we just take our equity, so we check back. The turn comes, the four of whatever. It's not a diamond. And he leads about half pot, 250K into the 520. If I just had third pair and no straight draw, I wouldn't call. But since I have the straight draw, I, I just can't fold this early. I don't want to put too many chips in this pot. If I'm going to put chips in, I want to be the aggressor with ICM. Regardless, we have to call. We continue. The river comes the two of your mother. There's one million chips in the pot right now. He checks. 
is maybe a spot to bluff opponents off a random jack that was value betting on the turn. Big bluffs in the wrong spot are just punts, especially when people are going to knock themselves out. He's been showing up with weird value hands. So for all these reasons, we check back and we think we're going to lose, but we are so fucking happy when he shows pocket eights. And so our pair of nines is good. Short while later, a short stack gets eliminated. Eight people left, 5,550 locked up. Stack is building. People are dying. Perfect. Perfect. Anyway, our stack is now up to 3.3 million, 41 bigs when we get in this hand. Folds to us in the low jack, and we look down at ace king off. We raise to 160k, and the high jack, Yosef, next to us, goes all in for 11 big blinds, or like 840k. It folds back to us, and obviously we call. It's not fun to flip, but our hand is way too strong. Also, some of the time we're not flipping. We don't want to lose one fourth of our stack. It means a lot at this stage. We see the good news. He has ace queen or whatever suited. It doesn't fucking matter. He has like 30%. We still need to hold. That's not a lot of uh, percent 70, you know? Run out comes eight, eight, six. But the turn comes a king. He's drawing dead. Let's fucking go. We eliminate a player, pick up another 1 million chips. Good game, Yosef. But seven people left. 69.30 locked up. This is our peak. We peak at about 4.5 million until later in the final table. The average is 2.8 million at this point with seven left. So we have 4.5 for the next little bit. We're just going to basically just be folding because the way things unfolded, the way people were playing. Another short stack gets eliminated. Six left. 83.25 locked up. Chopping is mentioned, but I shut it down quickly at this point with six left. At this period of the tournament, we were just patient, being very ICM aware, folding little pairs, like I mentioned at the end of day one, I think, where you just have, you know, pocket fives. Even though you have 45 bigs, it's like you just fold them shits in early position. You want high card leverage in ICM situations. You want removal. You don't want, you just want to win pots pre-flop or, or, or no showdown. You don't want to get into deep situations. So we fold through the blinds, but another person's eliminated. Five left. 9990 locked up folding again folding again four people left 13015 locked up 2.9 million chips stack still going down we raise the pot and then folded post flop we raise and get three bet and must fold again now 2.6 million chips and finally there's three left and there's 20 million chips in play and here are the stacks going into the final three the chip leader who has led the tournament from 27 people left till now has about 10 million an oldish guy has 8 million, and I have like 2.6 million. Blinds are now about to go up to 60, 120, 120. So we have 21 big blinds. A chop was brought up again. I was like, oh, let's play three-handed a little bit. Then, then it was brought up again, and I was like, all right, all right, let's check the ICM numbers just to see what they are. I have no idea why I, I agreed to check the numbers because no disrespect to these two guys, but this was the dream final three. But so they go check the numbers, they pause the clock. And what I would have gotten at that point was first place, we get 33K, second place stack, we get 30K and I would get 23K. And as soon as I heard 23,000, I just snapped, said, no, let's play. So I would have only got 4,000 more than third place. And I have a big skill edge. Fuck that. We're going to keep playing. Jeff Boski texted me. Fuck that. Keep playing. So they're kind of tilted. No, people don't like when you don't want to chop and they all want to chop. So as soon as I'm snap, like, no, 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 no. Sorry. I waste everyone's time. From that point forward, baby, I put on a motherfucking clinic, dog. I, I don't know how else to describe it. A clinic, right? For the level of 60K, 120, 120, we just crushed. And not just because we dealt, got dealt good hands. We just crushed. We started exploiting them. They made it so easy to play against them. Multiple times, we were able to limp the button, and then the small blind would raise to like 400K, and the big blind would call, and I could just get out of the way, hope they eliminate each other. And then the way I picked up chips was literally three or four times in this level, it would fold blind versus blind. I'm in the small blind. The big stack kid was in, in the big blind and we would limp and he would raise to like 400, sometimes 500 K and I would just go all in and he would fold. Right. And I picked up so many chips this way. I did it with pocket tens, pocket eights, like ace four off and king nine suited, I think. And, and he folded all of those times. So I picked up a ton of chips pre-flop just from stuff like this. So we go from 2.6 million to now 4.5. So we're in the small blind with pocket fours at 61, 20, 120. And I had been limping my whole range as I told you against this guy. We call 120. The big blind checks as he's learned his lesson by now to not raise and have me re-steal. And we're heads up to a flop with 360K in the middle. The flop comes four, eight, two. We flop a set, but it's it's a limped pot with no action. I'm, I'm afraid. I'm just hoping to get 200K out of him and, and just get one street of value. So we bet 200K. 
Normally, I would just bet 121 big blind, but against him or whatever. I mean, normally I check actually if I'm playing GTO, but against this guy, I bet 200K. He raises to 600K. We tank for a bit and there is a flush draw out there. I don't, I don't think there's a real reason to raise because he'll blast off. So we ultimately just call. There's 1.5 million in the middle. When the turn comes, it's another eight, eight of whatever. This is a great card for us. Hopefully he has trips, you know? We check again and he bets 1.1 million. We call. This pot has gotten massive and we have a full house and this is amazing. This is exactly what we've been patient folding down waiting for. 3.6 million in the middle, like 2.7 million in our stack. The river comes a seven of whatever. We decide to check again. I don't know what's right. I think that this guy is capable of bluffing. He has a big chip lead. He can put pressure on me. I think it's the best decision to just check and let him bluff or let him try to get value from his trip eights, whatever. And he bets 2 million. Like I said, we have 2.7 million in our stack and we have basically the nuts. We have a full house because we're in the final three. Instead of going all in, we decide to save our 700,000 more just in case he had eight, four or eight, seven. I show first being nice and I don't know what he had, but we win a massive fucking pot. We now have the chip lead about 30 minutes after refusing a chop three handed. We have like 8.2 million. The kid has eight, 8 million and the old guy has 4 million. So we come back from break with the blinds, like 80K, 160, 160. The other two guys get all in on a turn in this crazy hand where the board is eight, six, five, three. The shorter stack old guy has pocket jacks with no diamond. The young guy has 10, seven with one diamond. And when he turns his hand over, he looks confused and says, oh no, I don't have a straight. He thought he had a straight and I felt really bad for him. That fucking sucks. Like I truly, that, that, I really felt bad for him. That really fucking sucks to make a mistake in that big a spot that you're rarely in. They're both like pretty recreational players, but unfortunately the jacks hold. Now the X massive chip leader is a short of the three and poker is fucking crazy like that. The table dynamic has changed. I've exerted my will after turning down the chop. The X chip leader who had all the chips in the tournament for a while is now the shortest of three. I win a big pot versus the old guy getting value with a straight. The kid gets eliminated. I don't remember how. I blacked out, I guess. I didn't write it down. I literally don't know if I eliminated him or the, or the old guy did. I don't fucking remember. I'm not even fucking you. I don't remember. We're heads up now. We have 29,210 locked up. We're playing for $40,000. Heads up, we play for a little bit. And I have uh, like 14 million to 6 million chip lead after some limped pots, blah, blah, blah. He makes another offer again. He goes, how about you get 37K and I'll take 33K? And I said, no, like that. I was like, no. And he goes, really? For $3,000? Like he was disgusted at me. And I was like, yeah. Like I just said it in those tones. It was really weird. Just And then we just kept playing. Blinds are now at 100K, 200K, 200K. For a while, we were both limping the button and then going to take flops, which I'm happy to do when I have a skill edge, right? I just want to play as many pots as possible against the guy. The way he should have eliminated the skill edge if he were smart, and he eventually did start doing this, was to raise bigger pre-flop. If you're outskilled by somebody, just make it a game of chance more and just raise and go all in more often, right? After I rejected this chop offer, he began to do that with his around 20 big blind stack. He began to just open shove and stuff and we're waiting for a spot. I think we saw some flops. He gets as short as 2.2 million and I doubled him up on some bullshit pre-flop. Now he's back at 4 million when this hand happens. At 100K, 200K, 200K, he limps the button and I look down at ace, six offsuit. He has like 19 bigs. I'm like, yo, fuck, fuck it, all in. He thinks for a second but calls pretty quick. He was trapping. I'm fucked. Now I'm about to let him back in this match after having him at chips 18 to two. I double him up once. Now he's at four. Now he's going to be at eight. It's going to be fucking, it's going to be 12 to eight. He shows pocket tens, but flop comes. All right, so today's day two of negative 250, 245 locked up. 87 in our stack, 187K. All right, good luck us. So it's about 12 hours later and we fucking won! Let's go! 40 fucking K, bro. We are in the streets of Philly, so we're being very careful, but this is great fucking news. Great fucking news! Hell yeah, bro. Oh, I'm so fucking hyped. No chops. They wanted to chop. Yo, I have to Frankenstein this vlog together out of respect for the institution that is Philadelphia Live.
they told me no recording at the end of day one. I was like, yo, I just came to film a vlog, bro. But, but I didn't argue. I just did it. I wrote down every hand. An eight million, and I said no chops, and then took the chip lead. Yo, oh my God, how do I win first? No chop. That's so hard to do. Make the booty bounce on the dance floor. Now, he doesn't deserve any applause. He called with King Jack.